Hey, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. You don't need that gun, boy. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. It all depends on what you want. I saw your fire. It's just, uh, just wonder what you're doing here. Is this your land? Yeah. Yeah. Name's Cartwright. This is Ponderosa land. Why'd you put down that gun, boy? <coughs> <coughs> What are you doing here? I'm fixing some beans. I'll well, tell you what, I got a, I got me a better idea. Why don't we put out this fire and uh, you come along with me back to the ranch house and I'll get you something substantial to eat. Looks like you could use it. Look, I'm just drifting through. I'm not asking for charity. Uh, I didn't realize I was offering any. No, I guess you weren't. But look, I'll just eat up what I got here and you know, I'll move on. If you're worried about the fire, don't be. I'll put it out. I wasn't worried about the fire. <coughs> you all right, boy? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, maybe you better come along with me, huh? Well, I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. Just make sure you put out the fire before you leave. Yeah, I said I would, didn't I? <coughs> Nothing wrong with that, lad. A dozen or more square meals won't cure. You mean that's all that's wrong with him? Just ain't been eating regular? Not regular for the past couple of weeks or so, I'd say. Good thing you found him, Ben. In his condition, he might have come down with anything. But he'll be fine as long as he gets some rest and plenty of Hop Singh's good cooking. <laughs> Nothing more I can do. Have some coffee. No, thanks. I got to get back to town. Take it easy, Doc. You bet. Thanks for coming out, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Night. Well, I'd better get some food for that young fella. Oh? Well, like the doc says, it is sort of strange that a young boy like that be riding around missing meals. Well, I guess it is strange, but it happens. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't reckon he's maybe running from the law, do you? Why do you say that? Well, you said he pulled a gun on you. Yeah, he did pull a gun, but the gun was empty. He didn't have any ammunition now. Now, I think he's just a scared kid down in his luck. But that hot soup of hop sings will do him a lot of good. What's going on? I just saw Doc Martin leave. Yeah, Paul ran into this young fella out in the North Pasture today, and standing there talking with him, the kid just collapsed. He brought him in. He's up there now. How's he doing? He's all right. Doc says a little sleep, a few square meals, and he'll be all right. Hey, you're working sort of late, ain't you, little brother? Well, I got 101 things to take care of. I'm going to leave for Placerville in the morning. All right, Joe. Hey, Bob. Everything all right? Yeah, Hoss was just telling me about that boy he found. Oh, yeah. Well, he'll be fine. He's just uh, tired and hungry, you know. Uh, you got everything taken care of? Yeah, got it right here. Got the power of attorney from Sam Bates and the letter from Jim Powers. Yeah, good. Oh, listen, uh, Joe. Uh, be careful of Slim Hackett. Don't let him skin you on those horses. He's been trying to skin me for 20 years. Don't you worry, Pa. I won't let Slim take advantage of me. You taught me right. <laughs> if I'm going to leave bright and early in the morning, I better get some sleep. Yeah, as a matter of fact, little brother, you ought to get all the sleep you can, because uh, you don't look your best for all them pretty gals you're going to meet in Placerville. Now, Hoss, how can you say a thing like that? You know the only thing on my mind is work. Sure. Yeah, well, you just make sure that most of your mind is on work. Oh, it, it will be, Pa. It will be. 
Most of it. Good night. <laughs> Any better? I feel all right. Good. Good. Want to sit down? Enjoy your breakfast. You know, uh, I told you my name, but I guess I missed hearing yours. Wilcox. Where are you from, Billy? Arizona. Hey, what'd you do with my clothes? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid your clothes sort of fell apart just as soon as they hit the water. You know, clothes got to be washed now and then. Look, I ain't had much time for that kind of thing lately. Yeah, well, never mind. We, we rounded you up another outfit. I told you I don't want no charity. I'll pay you. You got any money, son? No, not right now. You know, a young fellow like yourself doesn't usually get into this, uh, this kind of condition. You running away from something? I ain't running. I'm just passing through here. Oh. Itchy feet, huh? That's right. You feet so itchy, Billy, that... Uh... You haven't got time to stop and sleep, bathe, wash your clothes? You, uh, you want to talk anytime. Be glad to hear your story. Mr. Cartwright? I ain't ungrateful for what you've done. About those clothes, I'll pay you. I'll work it out or, or I'll move on and uh, send you the money when I get some work. If you really want a job, you got one. But first you got to rest for a couple of two or three days and get yourself some good food in you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hoss, we uh, just had us up a new hand. Well, good. We're going to need one. Hi. My name's Hulse. Hulse Cartwright. <coughs> My name's Billy. Happy to meet you, Billy. My little brother being gone, I'm gonna need a hand. Well, don't you worry. I can do my share. Yeah. I'll bet you can, too. Look here, I bring you some clothes. If you need anything else, just give a yell, you hear? <laughs> Billy, you're weaker than I thought you was. I figured you'd have this wagon loaded by the time I got back. You know, Hoss, I was just thinking that I'm feeling strong enough that I could have gone and got the mail for you. Well, I figured no more breakfast than you ate. You wouldn't have enough energy to get all the way to the post office. Let's go home. Come on. Without getting something to eat first? Yeah, Billy, if you'd like. Sure. Well, Hoss, I think I can hold out till we get back. Go on. is pretty near all the way. Uh, really? Boss was getting hungry. Oh. That burn it, that ain't so. You're getting sound more like my little brother all the time. Here's a meal, Paul. Good. <laughs> yeah, hold this. Yeah. Uh, Billy's a pretty good worker. Yeah, I got a strange boy, though. 
Well, if you think you're getting a little close to me, so I'd back off. Are you figuring on keeping him around? Yeah, I thought I would. Why? Well, the bunkhouse is full, and I thought maybe we'd move him out there so we'd get a place for him. Yeah. Well, I... <clears throat> Might be an idea to let him stay where he is. Keep him around the family. I don't think he's had too much of a family life. I think you're right. He really opened up to me today. Oh, yeah. I think he needed a little friendship as much as he needed food. That was, that's what was going through my mind. Well, I'll... Tom Yardley. Hell <laughs> yes. Hey, he and Jennifer are coming to Virginia City. Hi, hot dog. Yeah, the, the 10th. Hey, that's tomorrow, isn't it? That's right. From Tucson. When does the stage get in from Tucson? Noon, I think. Yeah, by golly. <laughs> hey, that, hey, I just thought of something. Little Joe's show is going to be disappointed. He's going to miss Jennifer. Well, I don't know if he's going to be disappointed. You hear what This is what Tom says. We're planning to buy some land around Virginia City and settle down around your part. Hey, wouldn't that be something? Oh, After all these years, you two end up being neighbors? <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. You know what? We're going to town tomorrow. We're going to surprise him. We're going to have a little celebration. Fine. Huh? Fine. Yeah. Hey, listen. What about, uh, what about taking Billy in? He might enjoy that. Yeah, sure, why not? Get the other things in it. Yes, sir. Hey, Billy. We're in for a real treat. One of Paul's dearest old friends is coming in tomorrow. You and me and Paul are going to go in and meet him. He's got the best-looking daughter you ever seen. Yeah, I sure hope that stage is on time. Be nice to see to old Tommy Hartley. Yeah? It is going to be nice to see him. I'll tell you, I ain't going to be all the other unhappy about seeing that daughter Jennifer here. <laughs> Where's that little girl of yours? Here I am, Uncle Ben. Oh, my goodness. It's good to see you. You got yourself a young lady here. <laughs> Jennifer, if Joseph was here, I'd insist on a wedding ceremony being performed at this very moment. Oh, Uncle Ben, quit it. You and Dad have been trying to arrange a marriage since before I was born. That's right. And if the truth were known, we hate each no, other. No, you don't. <laughs> Haas. Hi, hi, gentlemen. You know, it could be you picked the wrong son for me. That's right. That, hey, Billy, come here a minute. <laughs> Billy Wilcox, this is Mr. Yardley. Uh, hello, Billy. And this is his daughter, Jennifer. <laughs> hello, Billy. Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I'd like you to meet Sam Denton. He's been our traveling companion all the way from Tucson. This is the Ben Cartwright I've been telling you about. Mr. Denton? Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, sir. Sam here is one of those famous Texas Rangers. Oh, well, pleasure, sir. I hope uh, that what brings you to the jewel of the Comstock is pleasure and not business. I'm afraid not, Mr. Cartwright. I'm here to see your sheriff, Roy Coffey. Oh. Well, he's an old friend. His office is just down the street there. Thank you. Jennifer. Bye, Mr. Denton. Tom. Sam. Why don't we get settled into the hotel? You, you'll have weeks to talk to Uncle Ben. All right, honey. Now, hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody's going to go to any hotel. You're staying at the Ponderosa with us. Hoss, will you load up the bags, please? Now, Ben, look. Look, it's all settled. All right, Tom? Not another word of argument. Billy? Billy? Give Hoss a hand, will you? Come on. And you get it. All right, Billy, hop in. Paul, I'll stick around here and take care of everything, and you guys go ahead. Uh, listen, talk to Ed Bates. Find out what delivery did he wants in that timber he ordered. I sure will. Have you always lived here, Billy? No, ma'am. I'm not from around here. I ain't thinking on staying too long. Just one second. What about the time that you were trying to press your girlfriend and you backed right into the horse trough? <laughs> I swear to this day you pushed me. I wasn't within 20 feet of you. <laughs> you too. What didn't you get into? 
And you have the nerve to complain about your own children. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Ben, you always did have it easy. Raising three boys, nothing to it. But raising a girl alone. Now, hold on there. What makes you think that raising three boys is so easy? Oh, now, come on, Paul. We never did give you no trouble. Let them complain, Haas. That's what fathers are for. That's right. Isn't that right, Billy? Uh, well, I don't, I don't rightly know, ma'am. <laughs> well, you can take my word for it. It's right about these two. You see that, Ben? No respect for our elders. <laughs> I swear if I don't get her married off. You eat. You know what doctors say. You need fat on your bone. Oh, ha have you been ill? No, ma'am. There wasn't nothing. Billy Wilcox, if you don't stop calling me ma'am, between that and my father trying to get me married off, I'm beginning to feel like a, an old maid. You ain't ever gonna be an old maid, Miss Jennifer. What a nice thing to say. Jennifer, you be careful of that Billy. I think he just might be a ladies' man. Now, Billy, don't let him embarrass you. Tom, you uh, really thinking of buying a piece of property around here? Got an appointment in town first thing in the morning. Good, good. That'll give us some time to play a little bit of chess, won't it? Up, Singh. How about bring out the chessboard? Already set up, Mr. Cartwright. Well, now, do I uh, sense a challenge? Well, unless you're uh, afraid to meet it. Afraid? Why, I beat you three straight the last time we were together. Tom, it seems to me it was just about the other way around. Well, that's the end of this evening, Haas. They'll be at it until 4 o'clock in the morning. The last time they played, they played all day and all night and all the next day. And they're still arguing who won that one. Yeah. Do you play chess, Billy? No, ma'am. Why don't you just call me Jennifer? All right. Jennifer. That's better. You two will excuse me. I... I think I'll go to my room. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Good night, Jennifer. Good night, Hoss. Good night, Billy. Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night, Uncle Ben. Good night. What did I tell you, Billy? Hey, she's something. She's the nicest girl I ever met. You and me better get some shut-eye. We got a rough day tomorrow. Yeah, well, Hoss, you go on. I'm gonna take a little walk. Good night. Good night, Mr. Yardley. Paul. half the night looking at the stars, huh? Yeah, I just wasn't sleepy, Hoss. Well, I must say, you've done a pretty fair day's work already today. I'll tell you what, Billy. You go on back to the house and get the chores started, and I'll finish up here. Okay, whatever you say. Yoo-hoo! Hoss! Billy! Hi, gentlemen. Hi, Hoss. Hi, Billy. I'm ready to go for that ride you promised. Doggone it, Jennifer. I got all tied up here, and it's going to take me longer than I figured on. I... Oh, but, Haas, you promised. I wanted to ride over by the pond. I haven't been there in so long. Well, I, I know you was counting on Say, Haas, I'm going back that way anyhow. Why don't I ride along with you? Good idea. Would you, Billy? Well, sure, if it's okay with Haas. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Oh, thanks, Haas. I'll see you back at the house after a while. <laughs> Have a good time. I love this country, Billy. I sure appreciate you riding with me. My pleasure. Have you ever been to the pond? No, I haven't. Come on, I'll race you. You're on. Yeah. Spot 
I wanted to see. Oh, Billy, isn't it beautiful? Don't you just love it? Sure do, Jennifer. Oh, I'd like to have a place like this myself and just settle down, never move away from it. Mm, I know the feeling. Father and I have traveled so much. So have I. You know, Father thinks of me as a little girl. But people our age, like you and me, we have our dreams. Don't you think so, Billy? Yeah. Sure, we got our dreams, Jennifer. Just seems like sometimes they ain't ever gonna come true. What's your dream, Billy? Oh, a home, I think. Doesn't have to be much, of course. Just a little piece of land with a, a house on a knoll. That ain't much of a dream, is it? Oh, it's a good dream, Billy. And it will come true. Oh, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong? No. No, you could never say nothing wrong. Not to me. Just that some dreams never come true. Howdy, Mr. Denton. How are you? Fine. Here, I'll take yours. Your father home? Yes, sir. He's in the house. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Billy. Jennifer. How was the pond? Just great, Hoss. Hello, Mr. Denton. Hey, uh, Billy, you and me got work to do. Yeah. Jennifer, how'd you like to see our new coat? Sure would. You got a barn full of them. Right. Oh, Mr. Denton, come in. Thank you. Didn't expect to see you. Well, what are you doing in these parts? Well, I'm just checking out this part of the country. Huh? Sheriff Coffey told me if I got out this way, I should drop in and say hello. Well, I'm glad you did. I sure am. Uh, just have me some coffee. Will you join me? Thank you. Uh, how do you like it, Black? Black's fine. It's good. It's a nice place you've got here. Denton, you uh, getting a line on that uh, man you've been trailing? Well, that's hard to say. I followed him all the way from San Antonio. Uh -huh. Through the Arizona Territory. And that's when I decided to take the stage and come on down here. He might head this way. Of course, with all that silver being mined around these parts, uh, drifters move in and out of Virginia City very fast. But the one I'm looking for is a young fella. About the same age and size as that uh, young Billy Wilcox out there talking to your boy, Hoss. That's him. Well, Sheriff Coffey tells me you've got a real fine family, Mr. Cartwright. He says you... Uh... <laughs> All my life I wanted to have a son. More than anything else, I never was able to have one. He tells me you've got three fine boys. You're a pretty lucky man. Yes, I've always considered myself very fortunate. I like to see that sort of thing. Family, close-knit, everybody caring for each other. That's unlike the background of the young fellow that I've been trailing, this Aaron Mendoza. Oh, yes. Uh, what did this young fellow do? He killed a man down in Texas. Oh, really? Different background than what your boys had, Mr. Cartwright. This young fella, he, uh, he lost his family in an Indian raid on a wagon train. There was only two survivors, an old man and a kid. That old man walked into town carrying that kid, both of them more dead than alive. And the next day, the old man died, and that left the kid alone. And uh, how'd the little fella get on? Well, it was this gal working in a local saloon. She kind of took a liking to the kid. She 
took him under her wing, mothered him, you might say, and she had this little old shack out on the edge of town. It wasn't much, but she gave that boy a roof over his head. But he had it tough, doing odd jobs, stable chores, washing the floor. But she did one decent thing for him. She gave him his name, Mendoza. That was her name. And he just thought the sun rose and set on her. How'd it happen he killed this man? One night, oh, better than a year ago it was, that kid came to the saloon to walk home with Angel Mendoza when she uh, finished work. She never liked him to come into the saloon. Go on home, will you? You know I don't like you in here. No, I think I'd rather hang around and wait for you. Hey, Angel, where are those drinks? I want you to go home. Angel, the drinks! Gosh, I'm not gonna wait around here all day long for them. It's about time. All oh, right, here. Yeah. Now drink up and get out of here. <laughs> What's the matter, Angel? You worried about your son? That is what they call him, ain't it? Aaron, he's drunk. Now do as I asked him to go home. Yeah, straight. Go on home. Your mother's busy. <laughs> Barkley, I think you better shut up. Oh, you're a big man. You want to feel important. Come on over here and wipe that up. Jack, you're drunk. Now take your friends and get out of here. Come on now. You know what she wants. She wants you to take your friends and get out of here. You talk like that, and you better start drawing on me, Stray. Aaron. Aaron, good. Drop it, kid. Leave it to the law. Marshal, he shot her. It was an accident, Marshal. If you shoot him, you'll hang. There was a trial. There was a trial. The jury acquitted him. Saloon gals come and go, Mr. Cartwright. Nobody cares very much what happens to them. And it wasn't long before everybody forgot. Everybody except the kid. And he didn't forget. Now, I didn't see this. The report was made up much later, based on accounts that came from quite a few sources. That kid stayed out of sight for a while after that. People figured that he'd lit out. Hmm. The word around town was that the Barclays had threatened him, told him to get out of town. But he didn't get out of town. That's right, he didn't leave. And he and Jack Barkley tangled. The shooting took place right there in the saloon where Angel Mendoza had been working. And according to Barkley's brother, the kid came in and just opened fire. Was there anybody else there? Yeah, three or four. They were Barclay's men. They all told the same story, huh? Naturally. Mr. Benton, it might have happened in a different way, though. I mean, couldn't it? Couldn't it have been a, a fair fight? Maybe. We can only go on the findings, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Benton, everything doesn't have to be black and white. It is in my business. There are no grays, no shadows. I'm not a judge. My job is just to find him and bring him in. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm sick and tired of the job. Thanks. That's mighty fine coffee. <laughs>
any for your thoughts. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard. I just don't think my thoughts are worth a penny. You sound like you have the whole world on your shoulders. Well, I didn't mean to. I, I had a good time this afternoon. So did I. Jennifer, you know, you're so easy to talk to. I just wish everybody else was. They are, if you'll just give them a chance. Well, they are you, yeah. Billy, you know, out there by the pond today, you were telling me about your dreams. Hold on to those dreams. Well, like I said before, some of them don't come true. If you're going to be in this kind of a mood at the party tomorrow night... Party? Yes, the party that Uncle Ben's giving for Daddy and me tomorrow night. You're coming, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. You're coming, and you're going to be my escort. Well, you know, there's nothing on this earth that would make me any prouder than that, Jennifer, but... Billy, you're coming to the party, and that settles it. Agreed? Yeah, agreed. Good night, Billy. All right, I gotta talk to you. Good, Billy. I was hoping you would. You know, I told you any time you were ready to talk, I was ready to listen. Well, no, I, all I wanted to tell you was that uh, after the party, I'm leaving. Oh. Any, uh, any particular reason? Yeah, I think you made a mistake about me. Did I? How's that? Well, Mr. Cartwright, when you uh, took me in, I think you felt sorry for me. You thought I was sick of drifting around and missing meals and all that. You see, that's where you were wrong, because I like that kind of life. I really miss it, and I want to get back to it. I see. You, uh, you really like the, the life of a drifter, huh? I mean, you, 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 you like to flit around from one place to another, from hither to thither to yon, not doing anything with your life, just so letting your life drift away. You really enjoy that? That's right. Hmm. Billy, what are you running from? I ain't running. I just told you I'm drifting through. I like to see what's on, uh, on the other side of the hill. Yeah, I see. And how do you, uh, how do you propose to, uh, to live while you're drifting from one side of the hill to the other? Oh, somebody always picks you up, takes care of you like you did me. That's all it's meant to. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Look, uh, Miss Cartwright, it's not that that I'm ungrateful for what you've done, because I am grateful. I'm sorry, but it's got to be this way. You're sorry. Well, Billy, you just uh, keep on running. I can't make your decisions for you. Cartwright. No, it wasn't nothing. Never mind, never mind. yourself a successful day, huh? Well, I, um, I think you might say that. Uh, you know property called the, uh, Rivers Ranch? <laughs> I know that property. I've had my eye on it for three years. Now, don't tell me that's for sale. Not now. I bought it. 
Maybe you bought the Rivers Ranch. Why, you slip, dearly son of a gun. That's what's wonderful. Oh, Ranch. It's a beautiful piece of property. Did you tell Jennifer yet? Uh, no, I'm uh, sort of saving it for a surprise. Oh, she'll be surprised. All right. <laughs> well, there's Sam Dunn. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. I uh, saw Sam in town this afternoon and asked him to come out if he had a chance. I hope you don't mind. Well, no, of course not. Of course I don't mind. people inside. They're strangers. Some of our best friends were strangers once. Jennifer, do you know, I have never met anybody just like you. Nothing seems to get you down. You just take it for granted that everything in your life is gonna work out all right. Don't you, Billy? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, it can be right, if you really want it, and you work to make it so. Uh, you make it sound easy, all right, the way you talk about it. You sound just like Mr. Cartwright. What do you mean? Nothing. Oh, I sure like the stars, the way they look tonight. Clean, pure. You're like that, Jennifer. Like the stars. What's worrying you, Billy? You know, you, you're like two people. You're sweet and kind and, and tender. And then it's as if you go into a, a dark room. And close the door. Well, maybe that's what it is. I'm trying to be two people. There are no stars in a dark room, Billy. I love you, Billy Wilcox. I think it was a good shindy. Oh, it was. It was. A great one. A great one. But I'll tell you, it's getting a little late for me. I think I'm going to go to bed and I'll see you. Good night. I'm hop sing. What are we having for breakfast? Hop sing the side when breakfast time come. Not before. Yeah, well, very good. Good night, hop sing. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> good night, Mr. Horse. See you early tomorrow morning. Tom, how about relaxing over a cup of coffee? Hey, you know, I'm still too excited to relax. I think I'll go outside and find Jennifer and... Tell her about the ranch. She's going to be a very happy little girl when you tell her. <laughs> Jennifer? Jen? Jen, what's the matter, baby? <laughs> Nothing's the matter, and I'm not a baby! Jennifer? Jennifer! Tom, what was that all about? I'd be the last to know. I told you, be thankful you've got boys.
Billy. Don't call me Billy. What's about matter, son? I just found out you can't be two people. Nobody can. You know what she said to me? She said, I love you, Billy Wilcox. And I made a lie out of it, because I'm not Billy Wilcox. My name is Aaron Mendoza. Do you know what you're saying? I know. I know, and I want you to hear the rest of it. I killed a man in Texas. That's right, I killed a man. And I was running. I was running when you found me, because I was scared. Tell me about it, Aaron. His name was Barkley. He killed a woman. A woman who was like a mother to me. He killed her, but the jury turned him loose. And then he told me to get out of town. Well, I didn't want to leave that town, because that was a home to me, Mr. Cartwright. It's the only one I ever knew. I, I went to the saloon, and I tried to explain that to him. But he wouldn't listen. He started cussing me out. Next thing I knew, he was shooting. I was scared. I shot back. And he was lying there dead. And I ran. Sure wish you hadn't run. It was self-defense. I ran because nobody was going to believe me in that town. Nobody's going to believe me in Jack Barkley's town. Aaron, I believe you. What am I going to do? What do you think you ought to do? I know what I ought to do. I ought to go back there and face up to it. I would if anybody believed me. I got to go back, don't I? It may not be so bad, Aaron. Mr. Denton. There have been a lot of changes made in your hometown. The Barclays aren't there anymore, and there's a judge who isn't bought and paid for. All right. I'll go back. Well, there's no hurry. The stage doesn't leave until noon tomorrow. I reckon you've got a few things you'd like to attend to around here. Why don't you just ride in and meet me in the morning? Don't worry about him, Mr. Cartwright. I'll stand by him. Thank you. You meet me at the sheriff's office, son. Good night. Can he trust me? Yeah, he doesn't think I'm going to run? No. No, neither do I. I don't think you're ever going to run again. But if you do, you'll run in the right direction. You know, Aaron, a lot of people in this world you don't have to run away from. You run to them. Do you really have to go? There's some unfinished business that I gotta take care of. But you'll be back, won't you? Sure, Jennifer, I'll be back. I still got my dream. That little house on a knoll. And I want you to help me find it. Oh, I will. I promise you I will. Grow up, Ben, don't they? 
Hmm. Right in front of your eyes. Yeah, they sure do. Boss, we got some work to do. We gotta help our new neighbors build a ranch. in the ditch up ahead, Mr. Dixon. You better have a look at it. I agree with you, Sergeant. You better take a man with you. Check the wagon and the area on both sides of the road. Corporal. After riding for so many hours, it's just nice to be able to stand up for a little while. Yes, I know how you feel, Candace, but I must ask you and your brother to stay in the coach. Why? Because some silly old wagon went off into the ditch? You worry too much, Mr. Dixon. Elena, that is his job. I know, and he takes it very seriously. Looks like you got trouble. Nothing me, a blacksmith and ten dollars couldn't fix. All I'm short of is the blacksmith and the ten dollars. Sorry, we can't give you a hand with that, but we can't spare the time. Good luck. Thank you. You see, they're coming back. All that worry for nothing. When do we get to the Ponderosa? Noon. A little after that. Just what it looks like. Wagon with a busted wheel, one man trying to fix it. Both sides of the road are clean. Good. All right, let's move out. Yes, sir. Move out! It worked very well. You stopped the coach where you said you would. I give you that. You saw the jewels the Countess was wearing. Gigors. Could have been beer bottle glass. Diamonds and rubies. Worth more money than you ever saw. Now, wait a minute, Peters. No matter what the Count and Countess have with them, or how much it's worth, you ain't never gonna get close to it. Not with those troopers and the Ponderosa ranch hands in your way. <laughs> so that's the end of that idea. You're wrong, Hardesty. It's only the beginning. All right, come on. Good, good. All right, now, everybody. You all know what to do. Now, when they come in here, Hopsing is going to show them to the guest rooms. The guest rooms are ready, aren't they? All ready. Four, five, day now. Yeah, good. Hey, here they come. Alexis, I'm Ben Cartwright. How do you do? It's an honor to have you here, sir. Thank you. And this is my sister, Countess Elena. Countess Elena. Oh, please, not so formal. I am Elena, and this is Alexis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, these are my, my sons. Horse. Howdy, ma'am. How do you do? And uh, Joseph. How are you? How do you do? How do you do? Nice to see you. Howdy. Oh, and this is Mr. Dixon, the United States Secret Service. Mr. Conrad? Mr. Dixon? Nice of you to be here. Uh, horse, would you look after the horses and the troopers? Uh, this way, please. 
Well, the house is so right. It belongs here as if it grew like the trees. Well, as a matter of fact, it did somewhat. When your father was foreman here, it was about half the size it is now. We've added considerably to it since then. Speaking of my father, Stubb Jones sends his best regards. Stubb Jones. Does your father still think of himself as Stubb Jones? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he still calls himself a cowboy. Oh, gosh, there's so many things I'd like to ask you about your father, but all that'll have to wait until you've changed him. Um, Hop Singh, will you show our guests to their rooms? This most happy occasion for Hop Singh. This way, please. San Francisco was a headache. The Countess decided that she wanted to see Chinatown. What she didn't realize was that everyone in Chinatown wanted to see her. <laughs> we very nearly had a had a riot. <laughs> we got the troopers all quartered and everything's taken care of, Paul. Good. Yeah, Mr. Dixon was just telling us what it's like to travel with nobility. Yes, I've been waiting for a chance to uh, discuss the problems here. Hmm. I think this is as good a time as any. What, uh, what kind of problems do you mean? Well, the Count and Countess are in this country as guests of the President. Their personal safety is of great concern to Washington. And it's also my responsibility. If anything, anything, gentlemen, should happen to either of them, it could cause an international uproar. Hmm. Yes, I could understand that, I think, but uh, surely you're not expecting anything to happen. <laughs> the Countess has brought her um, jewels. Collection valued more than a quarter of a million dollars. Hmm. It's been reported in every paper in the country fat target for every thief who can read. Well, uh, let's see now. We, uh, we have a small safe here. That will help some. But we'll also need um, round-the-clock guards. And uh, with your permission, Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to check out um, every entrance in the house, take a look at the outbuildings, everything. Oh, fine, certainly. Horse and little Joe will show you around. You bet, any time you're ready. Good. If you uh, would be good enough to put this in the safe, Certainly. we can do it now. up that slope in the cluster of trees and rocks. I want one of you standing guard watch every minute. Now keep the horses out of sight and stay off the skyline. And no campfire till it's too dark to see the smoke. Now listen, with the Count and Countess to Ponderosa, this whole country's gonna be swarmed with troopers and lawmen. Yes, they'll question everyone they see. That's why I want you to stay out of sight. Now what are you gonna be doing while we're holed up like prairie dogs? Riding into Virginia City to get what I need to make you all rich. I'll be back tomorrow night. Now go on, up the hill. Yes, sir, when your father was foreman here at the Ponderosa, he knew every inch of this territory. And he knew every steer and every heifer, too. Superb cattle, Mr. Cartwright. Now I understand why my father wanted me to visit the Ponderosa. Yeah, well, if you're going to take over his job as advisor to the Russian cattle industry, he had a good idea sending you over here, see what cattle raising is like in this part of the world. It's just beautiful. Well, we think so. There's a lot more to see, too. One dollar. I wonder what's keeping Peters. I've been thinking about that, too. He said he'd be here tonight. The night ain't over yet. He'll be here. He's a foreigner, and I don't trust him. There's no reason not to trust him. We've done pretty good since he's been running things. Why don't you shut up and bet? Two dollars. Could be a sellout. He could be telling the sheriff where we are. Why would he? For the reward money. Makes a deal. Sheriff gets the four of us, and he gets a pocket full of money and walks away free. All those jewels waiting for us, you think he's going to settle for three or four thousand dollars? Two thousand. 
I looked at the wanted posters in front of the sheriff's office. That's all you're worth. 500 apiece, dead or alive. You know, there's one thing I can depend on harvesting. As soon as I'm out of sight, you try to take over. And use some of that food, Slim. Fix me a plate. Yes, sir. A man's got a right to think of his own neck. There were ten of us when I joined up. Only five left. Three of the men we lost were good friends of mine. Violent death is one of the risks of our trade. Look, risks I don't mind. Banks and stages are fine. But this Ponderosa thing, you want to get us all killed? Nobody asked you to join us. Saddle ride out any time you like. Here you go, boss. Yeah. We wrestle our own grub. Why do you wait on him like that? Because I told him to. As long as he rides with me, he takes orders from me. High and mighty, aren't you? You think you're better than we are. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. You ain't. Sit down, Hardesty. Shut up. Don't you tell me what to do. From now on... Shut up! <laughs> You try that again, Hardesty. I'll kill you. Picked up something interesting in Virginia City. Read that. Listen to this. The jewel collection is said by experts who have seen it to be worth more than a quarter of a million dollars. Quarter of a million dollars? That's right, Horacy. You ride with us now or not? <laughs> I'm in. For a share of that kind of money, I'll ride even with you. Tomorrow, I ride to the Ponderosa. Ponderosa? That's right. Pete, I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm riding with you. Hmm. Well, I ride alone. There isn't that much money in the whole world. Not just the money, Slim. I've got an old score to settle. I'm not going to miss the chance. Howdy, stranger. Something we can do for you? If this is the Ponderosa, yes. You got the right place. I've come a long way to see my old friends, Countess Elena and Count Alexis. Your old friends? Now, who are you? Prince Vladimir Pavelovich Preznov. At your service. The fellow here says he's a prince. I don't know how good it is to see you again. <laughs> what a wonderful meal. And how wonderful it is to see you here. Your father said you were someplace in America, but we'd given up all hope of seeing you. When I read you were coming to the Ponderosa, I rode day and night. <laughs> and you'll stay as long as we do? Well, of course you will. We have plenty of room here. I've been your debt, sir. Not at all. It's our pleasure. Oh, I think we're being urged to uh, 
Move into the living room and have a brandy. More better. Everybody more comfortable. <laughs> Prince moves pretty quick, don't he, little brother? County seen that eyes for nobody else but him. You say that again. A toast to our reunion, your warm welcome, and to beauty. Here, here. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, your brandy is as superb as your hospitality. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. Uh, no, uh, call me Vladi, please. In all America, you and your sons are the only people who know I was born a prince. I should like to keep it that way. But you are still a prince, aren't you? Well, of course he is. No, not here, Elena. All that was long ago and far away. Vladi was the youngest colonel in the Tsar's army. He won the medal for valor in the Crimea. Purely accidental, I assure you. Vladi was also known as one of the finest horsemen in Russia. Yes, you remember when you won the Cossacks Cup in St. Petersburg? Oh, barely, Elena, all that's happened in a different world. The Winter Festival, the Tsar's Palace, the birthday ball. Remember, Vladi, that's the first time you ever danced with me. Yes, I remember. Magnificent uniforms, Glittering decorations, beautiful women. And you outshone them all. Not if I join you? Not at all. You seem uh, rather interested in the prince. Any special reason? He's what he says he is. Alexis tells me he and Elena have uh, known him since they were children. But he is an unexpected visitor. You do well in the Secret Service, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I'm going to go out and see if the troopers need anything. Fine. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll join him. Countess, would you care for some more? No, thank you. Please. Now, Vladdy, it sounds like you've been over in this country quite a while. I thought a prince had to stay around home and keep acting like a prince all the time. Only if you are a firstborn son. Under the law of primogeniture, the first son inherits the estates and the responsibilities. But I am a second son. Oh, I was not burdened with that. I was free to seek a career in the military or to roam the world. And you picked the military? Until the fighting was over. Then I decided to seek Dame Fortune in other lands. <laughs> Thus far, she has been a fickle and elusive jade. Don't you miss your home? Home. I'd forgotten how good that word could sound. You seem to have forgotten an awful lot. But not everything. I have something in my saddlebag I'd like to show you. If you'll excuse me. Certainly. Time we had a little talk. Of course. Come in. Come in. No, uh, Vladi, I really wasn't surprised to find you here. I knew you'd catch up with us sooner or later. <laughs> and this brief encounter can be most pleasant. As long as you remember, it must be brief. I would have it no other way. <laughs> oh, you still have great charm. You're a liar and a rogue, but you have great charm. That performance downstairs. Prince Vladi, second son. Too proud to live on his brother's charity, too much the dashing hussar to remain in uniform once there was no more war to fight, no headlong charge to lead. <laughs> you did it very well. 
You flatter me. We both know that a second son does not inherit wealth. But he can marry it. My sister is a wealthy woman. She's also a romantic. And she was once very fond of you. And you're afraid she still is? Don't worry. All that is long since dead. Yes, well, she doesn't know about the gambling debts. The looted mess fund. The hushed-up court-martial, which very nearly ended with you facing a firing squad. Twenty crimes you were charged with. Twenty? No. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Well, she doesn't know about that. But you will tell her. Only if I must. With great delight, I'm sure. No, Vladi. With great regret. Because, you see, it would hurt her deeply. And I'd like to spare her that if I can. Shall we say three days? And then you remember urgent business elsewhere. Alexis. Has it occurred to you I might have changed? Huh. You have? Yes. In the years since you last saw me, I've changed. I'm now a cowboy. I work with my hands. I'm as penniless as I was in St. Petersburg, but now I'm free to come and go as I please. And I take orders from no one. Well, Vladi, if it's money that you need, I certainly can... No. I don't want your money. Now, that's interesting. Perhaps you have changed. That's Elena's locket you have there, isn't it? You were going to show it to her to prove how much you've loved her all through the years of your exile. Three days. Winter is the time to be in St. Petersburg. There are snow palaces and the tinkling of sleigh bells. And slush and wind and frostbite. The water in the basin freezes before you have a chance to shave. That's one of the reasons that uh, so many of my countrymen wear beards. <laughs> Tell all these nice people such big, fat fibs. I'll tell them about the day the ladies of the court came to the ranch to visit you. Oh, don't you dare. She was being considered as a lady-in-waiting. These two bristling dowagers came to the ranch to give their final approval. It's my darling brother sent them down to the branding corral. They arrived just in time to see Elena rope, tie, and brand a calf. <laughs> Superb performance, but hardly the thing to qualify her as one of the delicate ladies of the court. What the two dowagers say? Oh, nothing. They fainted. <laughs> Excuse me. went upstairs to get something you wanted to show me. A trinket. I couldn't find it. And so you walk right past me and come out here? I remember a time that you used to like to show me the stars. Tell me the names of them. Look, there's Andromeda. behind you. You were so happy a few moments ago. 
And now you've turned to ice. What happened, Vladi? I was remembering, too. The night we looked at the stars from your father's garden. I asked you to marry me. And I said I would. And the next day, you were on your way to Paris. Well, you know why. You talked it over with your parents and decided you could do better than a penniless prince. Oh, Flatty, that's not true. You swore to love me forever, no matter what your parents said or did. Brave words, I remember them well. Forever turned out to be a little less than 12 hours. My mother and dad had heard things. Gossip. They wanted me to be very sure, and they, they asked me to wait for three months without seeing you. Then if we hadn't changed our minds, they wouldn't have objected. Search the ground. See if there's anybody else. Yes, sir. the big man himself. Get down and pour yourself a drink. Slim Rivers is dead. Oh. Sorry to hear that. What's he doing at the Ponderosa? Oh, I sent him in to see if he needed any help. We were wondering what you were doing about the jewels. The jewel chest is kept locked away in a safe, 24 hours a day. You make it sound so tough, your highness. <laughs> you see, I was at the Ponderosa, too. Andy Peters, a real, genuine 14 karat prince. The countess and you were going to get married one day. She still seemed pretty fond of you. So I'll tell you, we won't worry about that safe. Not when you got the counters there in your pocket.
bloody. Still the wild man. That horse of his puts his foot in a hole, he'll be a sorry one. Ah, Alexis, what a wonderful day for riding. We wondered what had become of you. I awakened early. I thought if that man in the barnyard last night was truly an outlaw, he would have friends. I rode out looking for tracks. By yourself? That's a good way to get killed. That wouldn't occur to Vladdy. He used to lead charges into the jaws of enemy artillery. But the little man in the barnyard was alone. I searched uh, from this grove to those hills. Nothing. Saves us the trouble. You ready to go back, sir? On a day like this, when I came out to ride? No, what about you, Vladdy? We ride, of course. You know, there is at least one advantage to being a second son. I'm not burdened with an escort. I envy you that. Everywhere I go, it seems the view is cluttered with soldiers. Suppose we take them up a little, huh? Tell them how Cossacks ride. As we used to do at home? Fox and hounds! Ha! Ha! Confusion to the troopers. <laughs> Not very nice, perhaps, but I can't remember when I've enjoyed myself more. Well, we'd better start back. Well, not just yet. I have some friends I want you to meet. What do you hope to gain by this? Elena's jewels. And a great deal of personal satisfaction. You know, Vladi, I really hoped that you had changed. But I suppose once a thief, always a thief. Spoken like a true first son. All I want back from you is a little of what I lost. You know what this will do to Elena? She's one of the few... Perhaps the only one who still believes in you. For what she did to me, I want to see her hurt. Your Royal Highness, let's go. It was like the glorious days of our youth again. Alexis and I were the fox, and the troopers were the confused hounds. Alexis and I separated, which is part of the game. And I lost him. But there's no need to be concerned. I'm sure he'll find his way back soon. Oh, sure, but you've been back for more than an hour already. He could have had an accident. His horse could have thrown him. He Mr. could have been with a broken leg. Mr. Cartwright, Alexis is a superb horseman. Well, he doesn't know this country. It's very easy for a horse to step into a gopher wagon. Right. Since you're so worried, I'll join you on a search. We'll look where I last saw you. I think we should. Oh, wait a minute. Mr. Cartwright, that area is being covered by my men. Did you happen to see anyone else while you were out riding? No, I didn't. Well, that's at least some comfort. <laughs> We're going to try again as soon as the troopers can saddle some fresh mounts. Well, you saddle up my horse. I'm going along with you. Yes, sir. Uh, no, Mr. Cartwright, I'd rather you stay here with the Countess. Let's get back to the ranch. They got Alexi. French carriage pistols. 
Now, I once owned a pair like these. They were very popular with friends who were challenged to a duel and had a choice of weapons. Mm. That's because they're so inaccurate. Yeah. You know, even at 20 paces, you couldn't hit a barn, let alone a man. But both parties could fire. Honor satisfied. No blood drawn. <laughs> Still no word of Alexis? Not yet. But he used to get lost off, and you remember? And sooner or later, he came home. This is strange country. Oh, yes, but the North Star is still in the same place. He always used that to guide himself. Well, I suppose you're right. I'd like to lock these in the chest, if I may. Yes, certainly. Guns. Why do they fascinate men so much? I suppose because they make such nice, loud noises. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you won't mind if I keep this for a minute. I want to show Vladi something that's in it. Oh, sure. Oh, excuse me. It's my uh, most prized possession. You remember? I remember. It's your medal for valor given to you by the Tsar himself. And you gave it to me in place of an engagement ring. And you kept it all this time? Yes. Because it was given to me by the only man I've ever loved or ever will. I told you that in a letter I wrote the morning I left for Paris. Letter. I had no letter. I know that now. That's why you've been so remote. You thought I turned my back on you and ran away. There was a letter, Flatty. I swear it. I gave it to Alexis, and he promised me faithfully he'd mail it. And he didn't. Yes, that could be. Alexis never liked me much. Oh, he liked you? Oh, I, I was not the man for his sister. When I came back, you were gone, and I, I couldn't find out why or where. I just knew that you had gotten into some kind of trouble. Come home with me, Vladi. No, oh, I can't. No matter how much I want to, I can't go home. But why? Whatever you did has long ago been forgotten and forgiven. Helena, it is not that simple. Well, then, I'll stay here. I'll stay here or anywhere. We can start a new life together in a new country. You would give up your family, your rank for of course. A penniless man? <laughs> you don't know what you're saying, Elena. Are you not penniless? Do you have these? They're my gift to you. It's enough. It's more than enough for a new start anywhere. It's too late, Elena. No matter how much I want, it cannot be. Not here, not anywhere. But you do love me. Yes. In spite of what I thought you did. I guess I've always loved you. Well, then it can be. You have news of Alexis? Yes, Countess. Bad news. The, uh... The man that we, we found here last night, he apparently was part of a gang. They have Alexis, and they want your jewels, or... Oh, they'll, they'll kill him? Yes, Your Highness. Oh, give them the jewels. 
How are they to be delivered? One man rides out alone at moonrise. He rides straight east until he stops. If he's followed, the Count will be killed. I am your messenger. I'm afraid not. The Count's safety is my responsibility. But it is my fault if it hadn't been for that foolish game of fox and hounds. Sorry, it's my job. You gave me the jewels, Elena. Tell them that. With all my heart and all my love, I ask that I be the messenger. It's Vladi's wish. And it's mine. Moonrise in an hour. I shall be ready. Good luck. Thank you. Hurry back, Vladi, please. Until I see you next, remember that I love you. They say they'll release the Count when they get the jewels. Outlaws promise. Harder to be counted on. My sons and I know this country probably better than anyone else. I think we could track Prince Vladi without being seen. I suggest you do it, then. Yeah. Horses saddling a horse is now. Moon's been up an hour. Where is he? You don't hear too good. He's riding in now. All right, scatter. You're late, Prince. chest on the ground and step back. Not till you cut him loose. No. He stays tied. Three guns say he stays tied. Three guns. Finally talk them around to your side. Hmm? We decided we could use your share. Now, Prince, put the chest on the ground and step back. Let's get out of here. Sure. 
She asked me to come home. It would have been nice. I wish Elena did not have to know. She won't. Thank you very much. Ben, thank you for everything. It's good to have you here. I uh, hope you have a safe journey back. And give your father my very best regards. Tell him I'd like to see him. Somebody with experience ought to steal those horses, like maybe Samson here? I give the orders. I expect them to be obeyed. But I know the car rights. If I get... I gave you an order, Benson. Now carry it out or face court-martial. Hear something? Hmm? What am I supposed to hear? I just heard the gate squeak. Go after those horses, Captain. Send Vanson after another one. Yes, sir, General. Did you like the corral when you. Couldn't hear anything over that storm. I'll go check it. Seen him before? No, I never have. See anything? No, it's too dark. If there's any of them left, they show scattered. Uh, well, let's get this one as a town. Set up those. Yes, sir. What do you figure they'll do to Samson? I'll put him in jail. We'll get him out. And when we do. Virginia City will have reason to remember Napoleon. It might go a lot easier with you, boy, if you told us who was with you. You and everybody else are going to be sorry you ever saw me. I got friends who are going to bust me out of here. I'm telling you here and now, start talking. 
I done my talking. You're gonna get your town tore up. It's no use, Ben. I'm not gonna get a thing out of him. I wrote the sheriffs in adjoining counties. It might turn up something on him. Just can't figure what's eating at some of these youngsters today. It might go a lot easier with you, boy, if you told us who was with you. You and everybody else are gonna be sorry you ever saw me. I got friends who are gonna bust me out of here. I'm telling you here and now, start talking. I done my talking. You're gonna get your town tore up. It's no use, Ben. I'm not gonna get a thing out of him. I wrote the sheriffs in adjoining counties that might turn up something on them. Just can't figure what's eating at some of these youngsters today. He's barely old enough to shave. He's old enough to steal horses. He's old enough to go to jail. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, uh, let's see later. Coming out to the Ponderosa, bring some horses for me. I've got other things to do. Dottie! Where are your manners? So long, Mr. Carter. Ben, I'm so sorry. I just don't know what to do with that boy. He's changed. He's never around anymore. Well, he used to help me out over at the store all the time, but... Well, lately he's... Ben, you understand, boys. I wish you could talk to him. He misses his father so much. Well, so do I. We all do, Grace. He was a good friend. But, Donnie, I... <laughs> it's one thing to raise three sons of your own. It's another to... You know, talk to somebody else's son. I... I... I tell you what you do. Why don't you bring him out with you Friday night to the uh, school benefit social at the Ponderosa? Well, I... Well, you are coming now, aren't you? I mean, what, what would we do without one of your famous chocolate cakes? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Ben. I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. Good. <laughs> well, I'd better be going now. I have to open up the store. Right. See you Friday. Bonaparte was considered the greatest strategist and natural commander of all time. And that's the way we're going to run this army. Just the way Napoleon would have run it. You planned things last night, Napoleon. They didn't go too good. You're wrong, J.W. It was a training mission. Do you know what blooding the troops means? Put them under fire. Watch how they react. That's what I was doing last night. Simpson got caught. We'll get him out. You're late, Private Benson. I had to help my mother at the store. What kind of an excuse is that? You know your way around Virginia City pretty well, don't you? Yes, sir. I lived there all my life. The rest of us aren't known over there. And I don't want us to be. Not just yet. Could you get me the layout to the jail? Sure I could, Napoleon. All right. Let's see exactly what kind of a spy you'd make. Exactly what happened in Virginia City today? 
nothing special. Most everybody's getting ready for that big benefit social out at the Ponderosa Friday night. And Ben Cartwright was in at the jail, but Samson didn't talk. Of course Samson didn't talk. He's a soldier. And I'm going to give you a chance to be one. I want daily reports. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'm not going to hold any more meetings here. That drunken uncle of mine is beginning to ask too many questions. You'll never meet me in the same place twice. You understand? Benefit social, huh? And we've already had a chance to look around the Ponderosa. I don't know, Napoleon. We've never tackled anything like the Cartwrights before. You've got it wrong, J.W. The Cartwrights have never tackled anything like us before. Now scatter, men. I don't want any two of you seen at the same time, together. My uncle's coming back here in a few minutes. I was wondering if you two were going to get here. Hello, Ben. We had a last-minute rush of business at the store. Oh, Ben, the place looks just beautiful. Doesn't it, Donnie? Yeah, it looks all right. Uh, Grace, if I know boys, and I think I do, at least I ought to, I think that table back there, the one with the food, is the one that's going to interest Donnie most. Donnie, how about coming over there with me? We'll have something to eat. It's enough for everybody. Let me take that beautiful chocolate cake. <laughs> Mmm, mm. that's, that's right. good. <laughs> You're as bad as Donnie. Oh, it's good. Hey, Donnie. Think uh, that uh, you and I could finish this just by ourselves? I don't like cake that much. Grace, let's have some punch, huh? Oh, yes. He's going to be all right. Now, stop worrying about him. Ben, I wish you could talk to him. Look, you're here to have a good time, so have a good time. This is a marvelous idea of yours, raising money for the school this way. Well, I think by the time we have a big meeting at the town hall, we'll have reached our objective. Grace, will you excuse me? I see the sheriff wants to see me. I think I'm not in trouble. <laughs> John? <laughs> it's on your mic, Clem. Well, I thought you might like to know I got a report on that horse thief you caught. Oh, that's fast work. All right, what'd you find out? Well, not the first time he's been picked up. Been in trouble in Carson City. Always runs with a gang from Gold Hill. Gold oh, Hill, huh? I heard there's a pretty rough gang of kids over there. Well, they stay on their own side of the divide. Not much I can do about it. This, uh, this fellow Samson, it, what he did, uh, was that serious? Serious enough. Going back to Carson City Monday morning to stand trial. I believe that boy's going to prison. Oh. Young fellow like that, too. Well, I see you're sampling the food. Don't forget to leave your donation. All right, men. You've been trained thoroughly for this mission. The key to our success is speed and surprise. Rip. I get the guns. J.W., I get the cash box. Fritz, I get guns too. The rest of you men know your assignments. See that you carry them out. We attack simultaneously on my command. Operation Australitz. Where you go be, Napoleon? At my command post. All right, put on your mask and move out. Donnie? How's it going? Having a good time? Yeah, I guess so. 
You know, you and I, uh, we ought to have a, a long talk one of these days. What about? Hmm? Nothing in particular. Just that your father and I, we were close friends. And I know it seems to me that a fellow needs a man to visit with sometime. That's all. My mother's been talking to you about me, hasn't she? Well, yes. Yes, she has, darling. Well, listen, you tell her to quit worrying because there's nothing wrong. Try to steal horse, little boy break up social in China. Little boy have respect for elder. Should be same thing here. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Hey, Clem, come Hi, on Joe. in. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Man, hot thing, hot. Clem, good to see you. Your timing's not too good. We just finished eating, but. Hops in, can rush up some food. Oh, no, I don't want anything to eat. Listen, Ben, I took a ride over Gold Hill to just right. check, see what I can find out about that gang kid's been raising such a ruckus and? over there. I ran into some kind of strange story. Uh huh? The leader of this outfit calls himself Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon? That's right. The gang's his army, he drills him, figures out every single move he's gonna make. Well, that bunch of kids that was over here sure had things planned out, didn't they? Well, that's what I figured. They stole the donation money and six guns. Now, he lives with an old duffer. He, he used to be a professor. Does that mean anything to you? Say, there was a fella here about a month ago. Spent a couple of hours with me right here. He was a professor from back east. Lives around here somewhere. You know where it is? Yeah, I think You so. think you can find a place? Oh, sure. Well, let you and I go and have a talk with him. See you later. It's good to see you again. Oh, well, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, it's very good to see you. Clem Foster, Sheriff, Virginia City. Very happy to know you, Sheriff. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I've been planning to pay another visit, but uh, my research has kept me pretty much tied to my desk. What, what kind of research are you doing? Uh, history, Mr. Cartwright. History. <clears throat> Even before I was a professor at Harvard University. 
<clears throat> Excuse me for a, a moment, please. A medicinal. I've felt a cold coming on. And would you gentlemen care to join me? Well, no, thanks. Thank you. And those were happy days at Harvard. All those eager young minds thirsting for knowledge. Oh, I forget myself. Surely you didn't come by to listen to an old man prattle on about the past. As a matter of fact, we came to ask you about a young man, Napoleon, I think he calls himself. Yes, Napoleon. His real name is Ted Arsenault. He's my nephew. He's an avid student of the Napoleonic Wars, and that explains his nickname. Could you tell us where we might find him? Oh, he comes and he goes. That's the way it should be. I believe in complete freedom for young people, don't you? Interesting boy. Interesting. I brought him out here with me when I contracted a common human ailment. Greed. I uh, thought I was going to make a fortune mining silver in, instead well no matter uh, now about the boy brilliant mind uh, brilliant he's a perfect student uh, why do you uh, want to see my nephew is there anything wrong well no, I, I just want to talk to him as all well, he comes and go goes, but when I see him, I'll tell him. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Napoleon. That's a strong name. That's why he likes it, gives him a sense of power. And that boy will go far, no matter what he chooses for his life's work. He'll be a success at it. And I heard the sheriff say they're going to move Samson to Carson City next Monday morning. Very well. What else? Well, Samson's in the first cell on the left. And the sheriff goes to lunch at 12. And sometimes he leaves the deputy, sometimes he just locks the door. What about the keys to the cells? Well, they're hanging by a ring just inside the door. Very good, Private Benson. Before long, every man will be armed and qualified to use his weapon. Do some practicing, Private Benson. When you can show me that you know how to shoot, I'll see that you get a horse. Get the gun. Well, in at the store. Mom said I could practice with it. Mind if I have a look at it? Sure. Doesn't look like a very new gun to me. It's pretty well used. Now, you didn't get this at the store, did you? Uh, no, sir. I, I found it. I, I was afraid you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Maybe we better take this back to town and find out who lost it. I was 
Just practicing with it. How'd you get out here? I, I thought I'd take a walk out here by myself for a while, that's all. Well, I'm going back to town. Mount up, I'll give you a ride back. Yes, sir. Woo! 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 All right. Oh, you picked up a stray. How you doing, Donnie? Hi. Yeah, big Donnie up a uh, ways out of town. Uh, how's everything going? Uh, just fine, fine. Picked up the mail, got all the papers straightened out. How long are you going to be in town? Oh, about an hour or so. Why? Good deal. I'll wait for you. Ride back home with you. Fine. Where'll you be? I'll find my horse. All right. Donnie, Ben, Clem. Uh, Donnie here found a gun near the Black Rock cutout, wasn't it? Yeah. And he uh, wanted to bring it in here. You found this? Yes, sir. Just like Mr. Carwright said. It could be one of those stolen at the Ponderosa. I'll check into it. Owner always recognizes his own gun. And Donnie, thanks a lot for bringing it in. Sure. Can I go now? Certainly, as far as I'm concerned. All right, Ben, what's the rest of the story? Oh, I was just uh, riding along right near that cutoff, and I heard some shooting, so I went over to investigate. Uh huh. And uh, Donnie was there, and he was practicing with that gun. You think he found this? Oh, I don't know, Clem. I know his mother's worried about him. Yeah, I suppose I'll have to tell her. You know, Ben, that's part of this job. They don't say anything about when they put your name on the ballot. Goodbye, Ben. Thank you for coming in. Well, I'll get your order out as soon as I can. Thank you. I'll see you soon, Greg. Donnie? Donnie, come here a minute, please. I'd like to talk to you. What about? Donnie, you know how I feel about guns. Whether you found that gun Why or did... Ben Cartwright couldn't wait to get over here and tell you all about it, could he? Ben Cartwright had nothing to do with it. Clem Foster told me about the gun. Well, he had to. It's part of his duty. You know, I don't know why everybody's got to be sticking their nose into my business. I found a gun and I shot it a few times. Is that such a crime? Nobody said it was a crime, Donnie. But I just don't like you fooling around with guns. You just don't like anything I do, do you? Well, I'm sick and tired of being treated like a two-year-old. Now, will you leave me alone? Military organization is based on a chain of command for a very good reason. Any man, including myself, may be a casualty. The general knows he may have to die. But in dying, he never really loses command. Hey, you really believe all that stuff you read, don't you? I not only believe it, I live by it. You mean you'd be ready to die for all of us? Naturally. You're my troops, and I'm your commander. Here comes our spy. You missed a very good lesson, Private Benson. But I'm glad you're here anyway. What's your intelligence report? Nothing special. Nothing special? I saw Cartwright right up. I saw him take that gun away from you. What happened? Ben Cartwright turned the gun over to the sheriff. I told him I found it. Those Cartwrights are starting to get in the way quite a bit. It's Joe Cartwright's fault that Samson's in jail. And now Ben Cartwright takes a gun away from one of our troops. Was the old man the only Cartwright in town? No. It... Joe was there, too. I heard him say they were going to ride back to the ranch together. That's very interesting.
All right, men. Operation Yena. Operation Yena? What's that? You'll find out. J.W., move out. There'll be no shooting. So leave your guns here at the command post. We don't want a murder charge on us. Not yet. Mr. Cartwright? You're not House Cartwright. How you tell? Mr. Horse over by barn. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, come quick. I need help. What's, what's wrong, buddy? What's happened? A bunch of us kids were racing, and one of the boys fell off. He's hurt bad. I think it's his back. Just calm down. I'll be right with you. We'll do what we can. Division across the draw. Attack on my command! He's right down there, around that bend. Strategy pays off. Just like the Battle of Yena, catching the enemy completely by surprise. Third Division, attack! That story about Napoleon sounds almost unbelievable. I know it does, but it's true. Now, Clem feels it. Oh. Isn't that your brother's horse? Yeah, it looks like Chubb. What's he doing here? I thought he was working at the house. Much down to the same bunch of boys. This is not work of little boy. This is work of madman. It was well planned. Why? I'm 
I'm going over to the professor's shack and ring it out of him one way or another with this Napoleon is. Let me go with you. Ah, you better stay right here, young fella. How do you feel, son? Oh, I'll be all right, Paul. Be up, madam, in a day or two. <clears throat> No, oh, no, no. My boy Chad wouldn't do a thing like that. You have no proof that he had any part in it at all. You told me you know the one I've got locked in now, Samson. Yes, yes. He comes here often. He's my boy's closest friend. All right, then. The least you can do is come to town with me and talk to him. You can do that much. Maybe you can get it out of him. What's been going on? This Ted Arsenault of yours hasn't been involved. I'd be just as happy as you about it. I have always trusted Ted. He is an excellent student and a fine boy. If I were to do that, I would be betraying my trust in him. If you don't do it, you leave me no choice. I'll mount a posse and hunt him down now. Are you coming with me or not? No, Sheriff, I'm not. Oh, I know you're a good man. But I can't forget that you came here only to accuse a boy who is as close to me as a son. Good night, Sheriff. I'm afraid you made a trip for nothing. All right, Professor. Have it just your way. beginning to worry about you. I asked you who that was. Sit down, boy. Sit down. I want to talk to you for a moment. I can hear standing up. Now, are you going to tell me or not? It was the sheriff uh, from Virginia City. That's what I want to talk to you about. Yeah, those lawmen are all alike. Just because some kids want to have a little fun. I told him that's what it was, said. I knew that's what it was. I knew you wouldn't be involved in anything like raiding a, a school benefit or beating a man. You wouldn't, would you, Ted? Why don't you crawl back in your bottle where you belong and leave me alone? I just wanted you to know, if you ever did get in any kind of trouble, I'd want you to come to me because I'm here to help you. No matter what the trouble was, I want you to talk to me. And who wants to talk to an old drunk like you? Chad? Chad, Chad, boy, come back. Trying to be reasonable. Donnie just flared up. He hasn't been home all night, Sheriff. Go ahead, Sheriff. Go chase after little lost boys. Maybe it'll save your neck when my friends come to get me out. Pipe down in there. Oh, what's the matter, Sheriff? Getting nervous? Grace, I'll do everything I can. Now, there has to be an answer to this, and until we get it, just stop worrying yourself to death. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, oh, Grace. Grace, I'm glad we ran into you. We were going to stop by the store to see if you'd sit with us at the school board meeting. Ben, Clem told me what happened to Hoss. If I thought Donnie had anything to do with that, I... No reason to believe that Donnie had anything to do with it. He ran off yesterday afternoon. He hasn't come back. Oh, oh Clem, uh, excuse me. I want to ask you something. Uh, anybody see anything out of him? Nobody's turned up yet. Hear anything from Samson? Did you get anything out of him? Not a word, and I don't think I'm going to, Ben. 
Well, I better get along to that meeting. All right, men. You know the plan. We've been through it a dozen times. The minute that town hall bell starts ringing, we move. We'll get the rifles first. Rifles? You didn't say anything to me about any rifles. Where are we going to get them? In case you forgot, Private Benson, your mother's store is full of rifles. I'm not going to rob for my own mother. You don't have to. All you have to do is let us in. I won't do it. Go! You'll do it. All right, men. Open it. I won't do it, I tell you. It's the way my mother makes her living. It's the only way she's got. That's very touching, Benson. I know you have a key. Use it. Hey, you want your own book? <laughs> Go ahead, Donnie. I'll break it if you don't. I know he will. <laughs> oh, all right. Now, please. Let me go. I don't want to have anything more to do with this. Let you go and tell the sheriff? I don't think so. I won't we'll let you do it! Grab him! J.W., go get some rope. Tie him up and gag him. the gun for you, Napoleon. All right, sentries. Take your positions. I'll move to my command post. One moves, get shot. My sentries are covering every inch of the street. I want your sheriff to open the jail and let my friend out. You do that, and we'll leave here quietly. Anybody crosses me up, somebody's gonna get hurt. No, sheriff, please. He's just a boy. Young man, you, you, you're going about this the wrong way. You keep your advice to yourself. All right, where's the sheriff? I can talk to him. Please let me try. All right, try. I'm backing up with this gun. Ted! Ted, listen to me. Stay out of this! You know how wrong this is, boy. All those years, we spent studying together, boy. I wasn't preparing you for this. Shut up, you drunken bum! Who's asking you? All right, get my friend out of jail, or we start shooting. I've got to stop you, son. I told you that, shut up! All right, boy. Sheriff, you're going to walk me over to that jail and release Samson. As long as I've got your word, there'll be no shooting. Sheriff, we're going to walk over there.
You want me, you're gonna have to get him. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! No, don't shoot. He said he'd die for us, didn't he? I'm gonna give your leader here a chance to show you how much guts he's got. Gonna give him a chance you didn't give my brother. It's just gonna be him and me. No, don't shoot. All right, I saw you beat up an old man. Let's see how brave you are against somebody that's got a gun. Donnie wasn't with him. You Donnie's mother? Yes. What do you know about him? Where is he? Is he all right? Yes, he's all right, ma'am. He's over in back of your store. But you better get to him. Donnie! Well, I tried to stop him from getting in, but they forced me. Donnie! Donnie, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen to him, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I guess Sam's going to go back to jail. Napoleon, as he calls himself. He'll have to go to prison. The rest of them, well, they did give themselves up. I guess they'll, well, they'll get about 30 days hard labor. I have to go with him, Mr. Cartwright. Donnie, what are you saying? I was out at the Ponderosa that night, Mr. Cartwright, and I helped trap Hawes. I didn't know he was going to be hurt, but still, I was a part of it. Don't you see, Mama? I'm as guilty as they are. I've got to pay, too. Donnie. Oh, Ben. Now, Grace, in many ways, a boy can prove himself a man. Donnie just did it his way. <laughs> 